So the landscape here is, um, it's a strip of land between two rivers, the Kimpaspe and the Coliban. And we're on the Coliban River here, which is basically fed or feeds the uh, Lake Epilock, which is uh, to our north. And so the rivers from, uh, from the south feed past our place and into, into Lake Epilock. So we're on a very rocky piece of ground, um, which we've carved a minimal flat ground out of a hill and um, built our dream home. Okay, so your home is called Nunamina. What does that mean? Nunamina is an indigenous word for bush resting place, which clearly it is. And uh, yeah, so we've chosen that name and uh, gets nicknamed Noons, but uh, Nunamina is, uh, is where we are. That's right. Straw Bale House was the first um, part of the journey. I wanted to build a straw home and I wanted a nice strong structural system and we found a prefab uh, straw bale panel system made from structural ply and straw uh, under pressure um, put in a factory and then the 56 panels arrived um, five years ago and we put them on the top of the slab, screwed them together uh, and um, put the roof on and windows in and here we are. So uh, the journey to Passive House was a funny one really. We were looking for a builder to help us build the home and uh, uh, the one that we liked a lot was actually a Passive House tradesman. He'd been trained in Passive House construction and he said why don't you make it a Passive House. So we did. We really didn't have to change a lot other than the choice of windows and doors. So um, we have a, a straw structure in most of the walls. It's 350 millimeters thick with a lime and fly ash render on the outside uh, with an air tightness layer on the inside, uh, plaster and battens and so on inside. There are th a number of fundamental uh, elements that are required in, in, in the fabric of the house. It focuses on the, the insulation and air tightness of the whole building so with the straw we've clearly got a lot of insulation and uh, the roof system also has we're at r9 in the roof but the weakest part of any home uh, in particular in a passive house is often the windows so the window frames uh, are typically the weakest part we chose to go with quite large windows which were exp one expensive and two thermally they're a challenge uh, and at the time, uh, so really four years ago, there wasn't too many good quality um, double glazed windows in Australia and we chose to import um, through an agent here some uh, Dauphiner windows from Germany which are triple glazed. So they're, not only are they high performance um, glass and frames, but the windows and the doors that open uh, seal very well. So the air tightness, so there's no, no air leakage through the seals. It's lots of hardware inside the frame and uh, to enable the building to remain airtight when it's operating um, you need those quality seals to uh, to help make it work and they do a beautiful job so what do you love about living in your house i love the temperature i love the low and stable humidity the calmness um, there's no pollutants and there's no uh, dust um, obviously no bugs and things but it's that uh, it's a comfort thing I call it thermal comfort uh, and you don't realize how comfortable it is or you do but um, until we go back to Melbourne and or another house and you realize how drafty how cold and how you're always looking for a jumper or a take your jumper off to, to remain comfortable whereas in this house Virtually for the last three and a half years, we haven't used a heater or a cooler. Um, so it's it's that comfort factor that is the winner for me. And our energy use is basically lights, cooking, washing, computers, and television. That's it. We have a seven and a half kilowatt um, solar system up on the shed. Um, we're in two phase area. So power core made us put in two inverters. Uh, so everything's in two, two circuits. Um, and we're, we're a on grid 
connection so we don't have any batteries um, the cost for what we use we use three or four kilowatts a day it's it's really nothing so the main living area is is pretty much northwest um, north is up the river basically um, and that proved to be a challenge for the passive house design not so much um, deviation from north is not really the issue it's really the amount of glass that faces the west and so um, the view clearly drove all of the decisions around the orientation and the constraints of the site uh, and we we had some challenges with the size of windows that we had and with uh, with a passive house the, the idea of shading is critical to keep the sun off the glass once it hits the glass it's inside and so you might see later uh, that all of the west and northwest facing windows have uh, roller blinds on them that come down because there's no natural shade other than what we've put up here on the, on the pergola so um, that's that's dictated a lot of what we've done to keep the house at a stable 20 to 25 degrees all year round which basically that's what it does in German house is building so that the approach and the the modeling is about any building be a, a shack to a hospital to an office building it's all about the fabric and uh, we try to help architects understand and clients understand what's possible to make them more comfortable healthier resilient but also um, energy efficiency is it's going to be a big, huge problem it already is with the cost of energy greenhouse gases and 40 percent of our emissions comes from buildings half of that from actually building them and embedded energy and half of them for running them so if we had every building running 90% less energy for running, that's nearly 20% of our emissions gone. So there's some real benefit long term of those things. So I'm pretty passionate about that. The principles of Passive House are an insulated fabric of the building, floor, walls and roof. And that includes windows, of course, and we talked about them before. So that's about um, protection of the environment inside. So air, air is then in a position where we can manage it so we're not having drafts coming in or out and so for that to work the building needs to be airtight and so we make sure that somewhere in the fabric outside or inside that there's a layer that stops air but lets moisture through so air, uh, airtight but water and moisture permeable and to um, then have that environment where you've got an airtight building so our house is closed at the moment we ventilate with a heat recovery ventilation system and for all that to work the air tightness needs to be at a certain level and the, the standard that passive house um, determined for effective management of that air is 0.6 air changes per hour and we test that with a blower door so once the fabrics complete uh, we find a door just a normal opening and we put a frame in it with a big fan that's airtight and we blow air in at 50 pascals so pressurize the building and we measure the leakage of the air and then we depressurize it so we suck the air out of the building and we check the leakage and we average the two to give us a, a reading so that reading tells us that one it's airtight enough so that when we run all run the hrv it's actually going to work you can open your windows of course there's no stopping you doing those things but the blower door is is purely a test to ensure that the fabric is complete and we haven't got any major holes so a traditional house most houses air tightness is you know not really there it's 30 to 40 times an hour is the typical air loss out of the building or in from outside so that's 30 times every hour the whole volume is changing so you're constantly heating and cooling that air as you keep trying to keep comfortable what we've done is stop all of that leakage and then can, that air is maintained at that stable temperature through fresh air through the hrv and the um, moist and damp air is extracted no got no mold no cold spots and you can't do any of that properly without with a leaky house 
So it all comes together. The final test is, is it airtight enough? And we do a number of them along the way so that we don't um, get a surprise at the end. So we're obviously in a rural area. Um, we do have the lake and have uh, uh, water rights to that and also to the bore. Three 22,000 litre water tanks, two down here, 44 down here and 22 up at the shed. They're interconnected. So we've got a sealed treatment plant system for waste. So all of the water from the house goes through that treatment plant and up into an irrigation field up in the, up in the paddock. Sand and heat pump. Um, and it just works. It's beautiful. HRV works where it's air is drawn out, passes the heat exchanger. So it does fluctuate during the day. So if it's five degrees outside it, overnight, it will slowly come down. But the idea is the, the flow is always between 20 and 25.